welcome to my video. Um, this is different than any other kind of video I've ever done before. And this one is about having a heart attack in the villages. I had a heart attack about four weeks ago. And obviously I survived it because I'm sitting here right now. Well, so far I've survived it anyway. But uh, I, I wanted to put this video together because I had some indicators before I had the heart attack that are unusual and I want to share them with you. That's one of the things I'm going to do here. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about the hospital that I went to, the Villages Hospital. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it mediocre? How are the nurses and the doctors? The overall care that I got from that hospital? And um, I have no pony in this horse race, so I don't know anybody down there. I don't have any friends, relatives, husband, sister. My wife is an RN, so she's helped me compile the data that I'm going to give you about the hospital, uh, basically the experience, um, because of her knowledge and combine it with my experience, I'll give you a, a pretty good, uh, I think, informed decision of what happened to me. That's my own personal experience. Nobody else's experience but mine so I mean you can take it for what it's worth but I think it's important that I tell you that and it's also important that I tell you how I ended up going to the hospital. Were there, were there any indicators uh, beforehand that would have tipped me off or I should have been tipped off by maybe some of the indicators I had earlier and I did not see them. It wasn't the heavy like somebody sitting on your chest that wasn't the throbbing door going down your left arm. It was really none of that stuff. So anyway, I hope to tell you all of this um, in this video, including the medication that I'm on now too, which is kind of one pill that's very, very interesting. But uh, stick with it. Here we go. So when were the first signs of so-called heart attack? When did I first have any indication that something was going on. It, about a week before, about a week before I had the heart attack, I was down walking at the polo fields here in the villages. It's a nice place to walk around, a mile and a half, two miles. I've been doing it about three days a week for quite some time now. I'm walking around, and it, I might go just three or four hundred yards. All of a sudden, it feels like I have a stomach virus or something right in here. I said, what the heck is that? And uh, so, and I get all the saliva in my mouth. I don't know what, never had anything like it. It's like saliva's pouring in my mouth. I have to keep expectorating because the stuff is just loading up in my mouth. And I don't know what, it, I, I don't know what's going on. So I walk back to the car and I sit in the car for a minute and I'm feeling okay. What's that? A little stomach virus? I don't know, something I ate? Who knows? Two days go by, the day before the heart attack, the afternoon before the heart attack that happened in the late evening, 2.30 in the morning. Same kind of thing, it was about 3 in the afternoon, I go to take a walk. Now I'm feeling really lousy. This stomach virus, whatever I got, is killing me and I this saliva in the mouth is all loading up in my mouth again. I'm going, holy crap. And now I'm down here, I'm probably the only one in the polo field, and I start walking back to my car. And I have to stop. I'm feeling that bad. I have to stop walking. And uh, in retrospect, I look back and say, "Hey, I could have, I could have passed out right there, and uh, they'd have found me the next morning." <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff goes through your head. But anyway, I managed to make it back to the car, sat down, and said, "Boy, I'm really, really, really feeling lousy." And um, I sat there for a while, and then I went home. I had that sort of, I took a couple of tums, I think, of something, some antacids, still feeling kind of crummy. Had dinner that night, went to bed that night, and, um, but I wasn't sleeping that well. Woke up about 2.30 in the morning, I got that same sick feeling again, the saliva in my mouth, feeling absolutely like crap. And my wife is asking me, you know, uh, oh, do you feel any pressure in your heart? No, I don't have any pressure in my heart. 
um, oh, how about your left arm? Are there any pain? He goes, no, left arm. Actually, I think there was a little pain in my right arm, to be honest with you. It, but it was nothing majorly, you know what I mean? So this is what we were dealing with. And then finally my wife says to me, you know something? We're going to call 911. So that's what we did. We called 911 immediately. So here I am in the next room, sitting on the couch, feeling like crap. And my wife's called 911. We're waiting two, three minutes. It takes a little while to get here, four or five minutes. Uh, but they arrived. In the front door they come. My wife had already come in here. She's talking with the 911 person on 911. Puts an aspirin under my tongue, I think. Yeah, here it's kind of foggy, all this everything going on now. Now I'm thinking I'm going to be a real jerk if I go all the way down to the emergency room and I got some little st stomach virus or some stupid thing like that. I am not thinking heart attack. Heart attack is not uh, in my brain cells at all at this particular point. Nothing. So the guys come in, you know, they put all this stuff on you and they're doing all this stuff and they're looking around asking me all kinds of questions. What's my name? What's my date of birth? They, they ask you that a thousand times. What's your name? What's your date of birth? So they're asking me all these questions, and um, they're loading me in the gur on the gurney and taking me out to the ambulance, and I'm going, boy, I'm going to feel like a real jerk I get down there. The worst thing you want to do is go down in the emergency room, and you're not an emergency, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, so off we go, as you can see, uh, pulling up uh, in the uh, emergency vehicle. They unload us there and bring us into the emergency room. Get into the emergency room, wheel me in, people running around all over. They see this? There must be nothing to do tonight. They're all running around and they're all around me. And uh, they've been communicating with, I think, EKGs and stuff like that with the hospital. And one of, there's a woman standing there. She's either a doctor or a nurse. I'm not sure of which one she was. But she looks over to me and she says, you're having a heart attack. What the, what the F? <laughs> so, the next thing I know, they wheel me out of there. And um, they're taking me down this corridor uh, into this room. So the room they take me into is... I don't know what it is. It's all metal and gray. All I can remember is it's all gray and metal and it's colder in hell. And I'm on this, well they took me off the gurney and moved me onto this like a slab uh, with like a, a towel on it or something, you know. But the damn thing was so cold. I was shaking so much. My feet were shaking, my legs were shaking, my arms were shaking. My whole body was shivering. I said, you got to do something. I'm freezing my you-know-what off here, and you know, I'm, this is crazy. I'm, I've never been so cold in my life. I might as well throw me out in a snowbank with no clothes on. So anyway, they come in. Uh, they're very good. They're very, very good. They got a nice warm blanket, put, me up, put a nice warm blanket over me so I felt 100% better. And um, they got a, what do you call it, that thing where they have it permanent, well, semi-permanent in your arm there. They, they have a thing going into my arm here, and they're waiting for the doctor to get there. So I said, where's the doctor? <laughs> well, they're waiting for him to come in. I said, oh, gee, oh, all right. So it's 2.30 in the morning, you know, they had to call some doctor to come in and do whatever they're going to do to me. Now, I don't know. I, I still don't know what the heck they're going to do to me, except uh, they did shave around my wrist, and they did shave around my groin. So now, in retrospect, I knew what they were going to do. It was a stint. It wasn't uh, open-heart surgery. So, uh, And I should have known better because if it was open-heart surgery, they probably would have shipped me down to Leesburg, where they do most of the op open-heart surgery, is down at Lees Leesburg Hospital, not at the Village Hospital. But the stints, these guys are really good uh, with that group of people. It's like a team kind of effort. They're, they're very, very good. So anyway... Finally, the doctor comes in, and then they start whatever they're putting into me, and all of a sudden, I'm feeling very comfortable, very relaxed, um, just feel very, very uh, nice, just cruising along. Nothing's bothering me. I can, I can handle anything now, you know. I'm 
feeling great. Uh, so, then um, I can feel somebody tapping on my wrist like that. I don't it felt like somebody was doing this to my wrist. I, the medication they give you sort of, it doesn't really knock you out, but it, you're sort of half in and half out, so you don't remember a whole lot. But I remember something going in. I come to find out later, they actually put the stint one up my wrist here and into my hat to put the stint in. And that stint I had was in, uh, it's called the Widowmaker. You might know what that is. I don't know. My wife knows the technical name of the uh, artery. But uh, it's called the Widowmaker, and it was totally blocked. So, and, uh, so that's the first stint. And then later on, two days later, uh, they did a second, second stint with another artery that was blocked about 85 or 90 percent. So they put another stint on that one too. So that's it. Now the stint has been placed. I don't know that. The stint has been placed in there, and they're wheeling me up to ICU. I get up in ICU, I realize where I am, um, I kind of realize too that I've had a heart attack and that uh, a lot of serious stuff had been going down here before they finally get this stint into me. In fact, I actually found out later that I probably had a half an hour in hand and that was about it. Um, so that's kind of a little wake-up call uh, when you find out you're down to about a half an hour <laughs> and uh, you had to be tended to pretty fast. And I'm very impressed with the Villages Hospital. There was no steps, no movement, no anything wasted. They, was, they were on me like white on rice, you know. I mean, they really, they really, uh, I was, uh, was very, very well cared for and they, they were on their A-game. Yep. So my very first day in the ICU, um, needles, nurses, uh, some food which I could hardly eat at that point. I still feel lousy. Still feels like I have that stomach virus a bit. Um, but I was sleepy and tired. I got plenty of rest. Um, people really treated me really well. The nurses were great. Everybody was spot on and make sure I had everything I needed. Um, I must say that the uh, staff there was um, A+, plus. very, very good. So, um, anyway, all of a sudden, the new dawn, or the new day arrives, and I've been open. And it's tough to sleep. you got these things in your arms, and you're hitting what little, they have a little bed sheet over you, and I'm getting tangled up in that, and I'm in pain. And it was kind of a nuisance, but hey, I'm still alive. Stop complaining, right? So... Um, the next day arrives, and all of a sudden, uh, it's almost like the stint kicked in or something. I feel really good. My circulation must be going much better now. The blockage is gone. We'll get one more stint to put in, and uh, we'll be done with the deal. So, um, off we go the second day. I'm feel, finally feeling uh, good again, and, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, ready to... Uh, have the second stint done. So time for the second stint. Doctor comes in, we have a chat. We were gonna do it the following week. And then he said, no, I think we'll do it today. So let's get down and get this thing done with. And uh, I said, yep, I'm all for that. Let's get everything repaired while we're here and your knives are sharp or whatever. So um, we're downstairs. Went into that cold room again, and I told them that they really have to do something with the heating system down there because it sucks. <laughs> and uh, so I also thank them for the job they did because I'm feeling great and uh, appreciate the work and effort, this effort that those people put in to my health. And uh, so the doctor came in, gave me that juice again that made me feel kind of comfortable, and uh, second stint. I didn't, there was nothing, there was no pain involved in the whole thing. It was no, oh my gosh, that's killing me. No, there was none of that. Uh, stints are a piece of cake. So they really, they really work. Uh, they do, they do a nice job. I'm just so happy with how everything went. Everything went great. So 
Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, second stint was done, and back up to the ICU I go. In talking with the doctor that did the surgery, both the first stent and the second stent, Dr. Alalu, I asked him something. I said, you were able to put the stent up my arm and into my heart with God guiding your hand. And he said, you're right. Well, there you have it. And I've had to take this, this thing ten times. I get very misty when I, when I speak about this incident. So, uh, and Dr. Alou, Alalu. But um, there you have it. I mean, you got the big guy upstairs and the surgeon with the great talent, uh, and those two uh, were able to get me through a pretty uh, serious situation. So my hat's off to Dr. Alalu, his, his talent, his work, and thank you to the big guy upstairs, too, because he, I think, played a... I mean, it, it could have gone either way. And I about had about a half an hour in hand, and that's it. So, anyway, um, I want to talk a little bit about the hospital in general. So, how uh, would I rate the overall experience at the Villages Hospital on a scale of one to ten, one being the worst and ten being the best? I would give the Village Hospital a ten. Um, the rescue squad that came to me. They get a 10. They were terrific. Um, the emergency room staff, 10. ICU, 10. Everybody. In fact, I, we wrote a letter, my wife and I, uh, to the Villages Hospital, to the Dr. David Berger, who is the COO of UF University of Florida Health, Central Florida. And I'm going to read this letter to you. Dear Dr. Berger, the Villages Hos Regional Hospital saved my husband's life, life, that's my wife talking. He arrived by ambulance in the ER around 3 a.m. on the 26th of February, 2020. They diagnosed him with a heart attack and immediately started treating. The ER staff was terrific and had him ready for surgery in no time. A cardiologist, Dr. Basil Alalu, was called in and within a short period of time, a stint was placed in his LAD, which is that Widowmaker I talk about. That's what my wife calls it, the LAD. The doctor told us that he had waited. The doctor told us that had he waited a half an hour more, he would not have made it. That'll give you a checkup from the neck up <laughs> really quick. Dr. Basil Alalu that came out and gave me the good news that the surgery was successful later on Friday, performed a second stent operation on his RCA. Sounds like a radio, doesn't it? Which was 85% or more blocked. Dr. Alalu and his staff could not have been more professional or friendly. And boy, that's the truth. Uh, the care in the ICU was outstanding. We did not get the names of the nurse to check Bob in, but he did a wonderful job. During the four days and three nights that we were there, the rest of the nurses did a superb job. We got the names of Tom, Susan, Maria, Mary, Michelle, Christina, and Deidre. They made sure that he had everything he needed. We can say they went above and beyond the call of duty. Dr. Salamundin, uh, I hope I pronounce it right, did a great job as Bob's hospitalist. He explained everything and took the time to answer all of our questions. We feel like we had one the lottery of life. We can never thank you all enough. And we signed it. And um, so, great, great care. Um, we'll forever be indebted to the staff uh, and the Villages Hospital for giving me another chance in life. Extending my stay down here a little bit longer. Thank you very much. So um, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, put them down on the bottom. I'll try. If you have any questions, especially, I'll put them down on the bottom. I'll try to answer them for you. Um, 
And like I say, if I could, if this video just helps one person maybe self-diagnose themselves to the point where they get down to the emergency room and it saves their life, it's all worth doing this one, this video, just if I can help one person. So uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a little thumbs up and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, write me a question there and I, I try to answer all the questions I get. So thanks, thanks so much. Ah, now, this is my lifesaver. This is called Berlanta, and Berlanta is a drug that you take so that the platelets in your circulatory system do not clump together. Uh, if I didn't take these let's say this morning if I didn't take my pill, I have to take one in the morning, one in the afternoon. If I didn't take one of these this morning, tonight I'd probably have a heart attack uh, because the platelets would clump and I'd be back down in the hospital or worse yet, I would expire. So um, the doctor was very, 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 very emphatic. You must, 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 must take one of these, one in the morning and one at night religiously. I'm told that I'm going to have to do this for a year, and by that time I'll be okay and I won't be able to get off this, but I'm, I'm married to this stuff for a year. So this was the important pill I was telling you about earlier in the video. This is a very, very important video, uh, important um, pill for my survival. So we take it religiously every day, twice a day.